Um, hopefully you guys can hear me. Okay, awesome. Um, I'm Asan Jirde. Today I'm going to be talking about the importance of state management in Vue.js. Before I do so, a little bit more of an intro of myself. Um, this is like my public online persona. I'm not a fan of Transformers or Optimus Prime, but I think this is a cool pick. So. Um, I graduated from UFD as an engineering student in 2015. Um, I actually graduated from this campus, so shout out to any other UFD grad, UFD students. Um, right after graduating, I worked for a consulting firm for a few years. Um, this is where I started to help front-end clients with the structure, the client-side applications. Um, and now I'm a front-end developer for Shopify. Okay, so all the boring stuff is out of the way. Um, view components is one of the things we heard about today. Um, view components um, allow us to basically group markup, logic, and styles. In view, there's pretty much a roughly two standard ways of defining components. In standalone view applications, we can define components in the, in the, <coughs> with the view.component constructor. This basically involves applying the name of the components as well as all the options the component has. So it's template, it's data, it's methods. Um, in pre-compiled view applications, um, these are view apps that are webpack or are zerify bundled um, and have the view loader library, we can define our components in a single file format. This involves placing our markup in a template section, um, our logic in a script section, and our styles in a style section. Now, whether we're defining our components globally or through a single file format, at some point as you're building our app, you have to think, how do we want to manage data in our application? This is a fairly broad topic, so we're going to start off very basic and very simple. This is a hypothetical app, and all we have so far is a parent component and a child component. And all we want to do so far is pass data from the parent down to the child. Like other front-end frameworks and libraries, Vue gives us the ability to use props to do this. I won't go into too much detail here, but I'll give you a very basic example. On the left-hand side here, we have a component labeled parent components. And in its template, it renders another component called child components. As it's rendering the child components, it's providing a prop labeled host. This prop is given a string value of FITC. The child component declares a prop and uses the mustache syntax to bind that value onto a template. So this is an example of using two components to display a single header element that says, hello, FITC. All right, so far, so good. Regardless of how big your view app gets, using props to pass data downwards often remains the same. Now, what if you wanted to pass information in the opposite direction? What if you wanted our child components to notify the parent component about something? We can't use props for this. Vue gives us the ability to use something called Vue Custom Events. Vue Custom Events behave very similar to native JavaScript custom events, but there's one key distinction. Vue Custom Events are pretty much targeted towards communication between components as opposed to communication between DOM nodes. We'll go through a very brief example of this as well. Here on the left-hand side, we're going to have a child component. And in the template of the child components exists a click event listener. That's denoted by the at click syntax. When this click event listener gets triggered, a change speaker method within the component gets called. The change speaker method uses the components events interface to fire a custom event. What is the name of the custom event? It's change speaker. In addition, the child component ex expects a prop labeled speaker. Now in the parent components, where the child component is being rendered, there exists a custom event listener. And that's denoted by the at change speaker syntax. syntax. <clears throat> so what's happening here is when this event gets triggered within the child components, this listener understands and calls the parent components change speaker method. What does the parent components change speaker method do? It changes the component speaker value from Hassan to Jen. So this is basically using custom events for a user to see a header element. And when he or she clicks it, it changes from saying hello Hassan to hello Jen. Might be a bit overkill, but I think this is a decent example nonetheless. In addition, with our custom event list uh, triggers, we can actually pass data as well. We could have passed an object with the name property of Jen with which the custom event listener could have used. And custom event listeners don't have to be declared on the template. They can actually be declared programmatically as well. So there we have it. We're using props to pass data downwards, and we're using custom events to send data back up. Um, what if our app grew by just a single component? What if we introduced a new component that was a child of the parent and a sibling to the first child component? If we wanted to pass data from the parent, we'll use props for this. There's, there's no issues there. But how would we pass information between the two child components? Can we use custom events the way we've just saw? saw? Not really. The custom events we just sh shown was within the scope of the child component. 
And as a result, that custom event listener had to be declared where that child component was being rendered. Since two isolated and completely unrelated components aren't being rendered within one another, we can't just use a custom event listener. So what do we do here? Like we have to actually think at this moment, as we start to introduce more and more components, how do we want to manage data between all these components? With Vue, there's actually a bunch of different ways, but they can be grouped into sort of three main buckets. We can use a global event bus. We can use a simple form of state management. Or we can use the Flux-like library Vuex. I'm going to be talking about the first two somewhat briefly before diving into Vuex. So what is an event bus? An event bus is a view instance that's used to enable isolated components to subscribe and publish custom events between each other. So there's a few key things here. First and foremost, an event bus is a view instance. View components are view instances. Every view instance has its own custom events interface. An event bus uses its events, in events interface to actually allow isolated components to subscribe and publish custom events. How does that actually work? An event bus is made global for this purpose. So we'll go through, uh, through a brief example of this as well. Here, assume we have an event bus that's global in our application. And we're going to have two components completely isolated from one another. In the first component exists a method called emit event. When this, when this particular method gets triggered, it uses the event bus events interface to fire a custom event. Now, a completely unrelated isolated component can actually have an event bus listener. In this particular example, we've set up this listener within the created hook of that component. A created hook is just a lifecycle hook. It gets triggered when the component gets created for the very first time. But the key thing here is we're saying when this component gets created, we're attaching this particular listener to do something. So throughout the life of the second component, whenever the first actual event gets triggered, it would always console log a message. And as I've shown pre uh, previously, we can actually pass data within our custom events. So remember how our first child component was passing data upwards? We can use an event bus in this particular case. And between the two different child components, we can use an event bus as well. There's nothing wrong with this. This works fairly well. The only issue is most applications don't actually look like this. They look a little bit more like this. And this is a fairly simple example as well. Let's assume all the white lines here are props or data that's being passed downwards. And let's just say components 1.1 needed to notify the parent component about something. It would fire a custom event, and the parent component would create a listener. If component 1.2 needed to do the same thing, what if components 2 and 3 needed to share some form of information? You see what's starting to happen here. If you look at the Vue.js style guide, it's actually recommended to not use an event bus for application-wide state management. And this is the reason why. Though it's incredibly easy to set up, things get hard to track really quickly. And when you're building an application, oftentimes a single user interaction can affect multiple discrete parts of your app. OK, you have an understanding of, a rough understanding of how an event, event bus works. Let's move on to something else. We know when a view application gets rendered for the very first time, there's always going to be an uppermost parent component. So why don't we move all application level data up to this component and use props to pass this data down? All we'll need to do is somehow maybe just use the child components to notify the parent component to change certain data values. Thanks to Vue's reactivity system, child components will recognize this and re-render in certain cases. So what we're basically talking about here is a simple form of state management. State management is the management of application-level data. This may seem obvious or like common sense, but a key thing here is we're managing application-level data. We want to manage data that's shared in multiple parts of our app. We don't care about data that should live within a particular component. That should stay in that component and let the component deal with it. Now, instead of moving everything to a particular component, why don't we externalize this to something we can call a store? A store can be an object or a class that has two distinct properties. It has the state of your entire application. Let's assume for this particular example, um, the talk I'm giving is the properties we want in our app. And it has the methods or mutations that are necessary to directly mutate store state. So here we have a change speaker method. It's expecting a payload, and with that payload, it's going to directly update the state speaker value. Let's go through a brief example of how this can work with components. At the very top, we have the store for references sake. Hopefully, you guys can see it. And we're going to have two components interact with each other through the store. Component A, on the left-hand side, has a particular purpose. Its purpose is to only display the speaker value from the store. How does it do that? It's going to actually create a local copy of the store state within its data function. 
Component B, is, there's going to be a method that we're actually going to use to affect what component A is displaying. But when we say component B here interacts with component A or communicates with component A, the term is used loosely. It's actually not going to do anything directly to component A. It's going to be going through the store to do this. So let's assume there was a method in component B. And this particular method can be called through a click event, a keyboard event. It doesn't necessarily matter. When this event gets called, it's going to call the store change speaker method. And it's going to pass in the payload that the store change speaker method expects. Since components A data property or data function actually proxies the store, whenever the store actually changes the store states, component A will re-render to accommodate this. And there's also two more things we should talk about that's fairly important. We're mutating store state directly. For those who come from a React or a Redux background, this may be a little foreign. In React, state is treated as immutable. We have to actually replace state entirely. In Vue, we can actually can directly affect state values. And components can recognize this and re-render in certain cases. Now, the other thing <coughs> isn't something that's apparent, but something that has to be enforced. As we start to grow our store, and if you want to introduce more and more mutations and more methods, we have to have a conscious effort to keep all these mutations within the store. This is a key aspect to making this method of state management more maintainable than, let's say, um, an event bus. So let's assume you had a change talk method or a change venue method, et cetera, et cetera. So remember that hypothetical app we had before that was giving us a bit of a headache? Um, we don't have to rely on custom events to pass information throughout the app. And we don't have to use props to pass all the data to every single component. We could in certain cases. But in other cases, we can allow components to actually depend upon a store. So now let's talk about a few key things here. And let's this time talk about the pieces that indirectly interact with the store. We'll look at component B first. Component B's change speaker method has a particular responsibility. It could do several different things, but its end goal is to call the store change speaker method. It's acting on the store. So we can sort of label this as a store action. The store change speaker method has a particular responsibility as well. Its responsibility is to mutate store state. So why don't we say when component, when component B's method gets called, it's an action acting on the store mutation. Component A is independent of this. Component A doesn't care what component B does. It doesn't really care what the store has. Its purpose is to display a specific value from the store state. So we can say component A is getting information. It's a getter. We have an action, a mutation, and a getter for a single interaction we want to invoke. If our application was to grow, we'll have a lot more of these. We'll have a lot more getters, a lot more mutations, a lot more actions. Our mutations, thankfully, are all centralized, but our actions and getters could be in multiple different components. Wouldn't it be nice if we can actually you know, explicitly define these and grow them as our app grows? This is exactly where Vuex comes in. Vuex is a Flux-like state management library built solely for use with Vue. First and foremost, what is Flux? Flux is a pattern. It's a design pattern created by Facebook. The Flux pattern consists of four parts organized as a one-way data pipeline. Action, dispatcher, store, view. Vuex and view apps adapt the Flux pattern this way. The view of components call an action. Actions commit to mutations. Mutations mutate store state. When that happens, the view of components re-render. This might be a little rough, but I'm going to be talking about each of these pieces in a lot more detail. Now, Vuex is a library. If we're bringing it into our application, we have to actually introduce it. NPM, Yarn, a content delivery network. And for module-based systems, you actually have to explicitly install Vuex in your app. Vue.use Vuex. Now, the heart of a Vuex integration is the Vuex store. A Vuex store can be created by saying Vuex.store and passing in all the pieces that make up the store. There are four pieces in total that make up a store. State, mutations, actions, and getters. State and mutations have to be introduced to make up your store. Actions and getters don't have to be used, but they pretty much make your store complete. Just like how a Vuex store is the heart of a Vuex integration, the Vue instance is the heart of a Vue application. The view instance is where we specify the DOM element our app is going to be mounted upon. It's also where we specify the uppermost parent component that's going to be rendered in our view app. To have our Vuex store fully integrated into our view application, we have to explicitly introduce it into our view instance. 
Okay, so now we have an idea of how a Vuex store is going to be integrated. Let's talk about all the pieces of the Vuex store. So initially, we've seen state. State remains the same. State is just an object that consists of all the properties of your application. Let's assume for this example as well, um, the details of this stock is the state we need. Now, mutations are functions that directly mutate store state. In Flux architectures, mutation handlers are often denoted in capital letters. This is to distinguish them from other functions and for tooling or linting purposes. In Vuex, mutations always have access to state as the first argument. When actions actually commit to mutations, they may or may not pass in a payload. Here, we have an update speaker mutation that's expecting a payload, and with this payload, updates the state speaker value. Actions exist to call mutations. Actions are also responsible in performing any or all asynchronous calls prior to committing to a mutation. There's a few things going on here, so we'll break it down step by step. Here we have an update speaker action that's probably going to be committing to the update speaker mutation since they have the same name. Though actions don't have to commit to a single mutation. They can commit to one or more. Like mutations, actions have access to an object right away. But in Vuex, actions have access to an object often labeled as the context object. Context provides access to a few different things. Context.state, we can access getters with context.getters, and we can access the commit function with context.commit. Let's assume for this particular example, we don't need access to state, we don't need access to getters, and we're only going to be committing. Like I mentioned, actions are responsible in performing any asynchronous calls. Let's just assume we needed to make some form of get request to retrieve some form of information. Here we have the Axios library as an example. Axios is an HTTP library for making get or post requests, but multiple different ones can be used. Here we're making a get request to a hypothetical application, or hypothetical API, sorry. And with the response retrieved, we're going to be committing under the condition that the call is successful to the update speaker mutation. Let's just say we're going to be passing in a particular value from the response. It could be an array. We want to pass the first item of the array. It doesn't necessarily matter. But as you can see here, we're passing in the payload that the mutation expects. Now, the last item of a Vuex store is getters. Getters are to a Vuex store what computed properties are to a view component. Now, for those who may not be familiar, a computed property in a view component is basically used to perform some form of calculation to data prior to displaying that information to the template. Getters here play a very similar role. They're often used to perform some calculation to view X state prior to access, accessing this information in a component. So this is why it's pretty important to understand you don't have to use getters in your view X store. If you needed to compute store state directly, you can do so without the use of getters. This is a personal preference of mine. I adhere to using getters to compute all state information. Like mutations, getters have access to state right away. So as you can see here, there's a get speaker getter that simply returns the speaker value from state doesn't do anything else. OK, so we have our Vuex store integrated. We have all the pieces of our Vuex store set up. What do our components have to do? So when your Vuex store is very well built, components often do one of two things. They either get state data. This could be done through getters or states. Or they either dispatch actions. So this is a good moment to actually think about and understand that when your Vuex store is very well built, your components become a lot simpler. Your components tend to become more presentational. They tend to retrieve information, and they tend to call actions. The store oftentimes does a lot of the heavy lifting. So let's see an example of this. Here we have a single file component. The format's a little different than examples I've shown before, but the concept is the same. In the template of this component exists a header element. And on the header element exists a click event listener. When this click event listener is invoked, it calls a component update speaker method. In addition, there's some text content within the header elements, and there's a get speaker property. This property could be a prop, a data property, a computer property. We'll find out shortly. In the script section, we're exporting the speaker components, the name with the speaker component. And in the methods, we're specifying the update speaker method that actually exists in our template. What does the update speaker method do? It says this.store.dispatch update speaker. It's dispatching the update speaker action. So we're pretty much mapping the update speaker method here to the update speaker action one-to-one. -one. When the method gets called, the action gets dispatched. 
And if you look at the computer property here, we're seeing something very similar. Here's the get speaker property that's being used in the template. What does it do? It returns the value of the get speaker getter in our store. We're mapping the computer property get speaker to the get speaker um, getter in our store one to one. Notice how we're accessing store here. We're specifying this dot store, and there's a dollar side beside the store. This dollar store is literally the store available in our view application. How is it available in our view app? We had to explicitly pass it into our view instance. And as a result, the store is now accessible in every component we have. Now, one thing you may tend to find is if you use a lot of getters and a lot of dispatchers is you're repeating this dot store pretty often. And you can get a little verbose. So Vuex recognizes this and provides helpers. Here are two helpers, helpers, map getters and map actions. And what these helpers do is they literally map the information from your component directly onto your store. So in our method section here, we're mapping whatever update speaker action exists in our store onto an update speaker method in our components. And we're doing the same thing in our computer property. We're mapping whatever get speaker getter exists in our store onto a get speaker computer property in our components. This is exactly the same functionality as the example before, but the idea here is a lot more easier to read, and we can start to induce a lot more getters, a lot more dispatchers, a lot easier. So what happens to our state um, when a user actually clicks that particular header element? If anyone remembered, the speaker value initially was myself, Hassan Jirde. When a user clicks it, the update speaker action is dispatched. What does the update speaker action do? It performs an asynchronous call. When this call is complete, the update speaker mutation is committed and the necessary payload is passed in. Let's just assume this particular payload says Chris Fritz. What happens after that? The update speaker mutation accepts that payload and directly mutates the store state. So to the user, they're oblivious to this. All the user sees is a simple header element with some text content. When he or she clicks it in this particular example, after the async call is complete, it changes. So we're explicitly introducing all these additional steps. So it's safe to say that the Vuex method of managing data extends a simple store by introducing explicitly defined getters, mutations, and actions. The concept is the same. High level, they do the same thing. But we're deliberately making these steps happen. Now, you may ask, why? Why are we doing this? This introduces the flux-like architecture of managing data. We want to have these steps so it's easier to track and easier to maintain as an application grows. Is this necessary for all applications? Maybe, maybe not. Um, so like the example I just shown, if that was the only thing being built in an app, a Vuex store might be a little overkill, possibly. Um, now the second really cool thing that Vuex does is it integrates with the Vue dev tools for time travel debugging. Now for those who don't know, the Vue dev tools is a Chrome extension or a Firefox add-on that provides huge benefit to debugging and viewing your Vue app in the browser. I thought this might be a little better to actually see instead of talk about, so I'm gonna switch over very briefly. Uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, the concept's still here. So here is a shopping cart application. It's a little zoomed in, but that doesn't really matter. Um, and this is a Vuex integrated shopping cart I built shortly, or shortly a while ago, um, and it persists to a local server. And here I have the Vue dev tools open. Um, and this could be a, a topic or a talk of its own, so I won't go to a lot of, a lot of detail, but here in the view dev tools, we could basically see the entire app component. We can see the cart list component on the left-hand side. We can see the product list component on the right-hand side. Within the product list, we can basically see the list of components within product list item. As we click a particular component here, we can see the props being passed in. You can see how much advantage this brings if you find issues in your view app. And the best part behind Vuex is it integrates to the view dev tools automatically. So initially here, application is at a fresh state, and this is the base state of application. We can literally see all the information in our Vuex store. We can see the state, we can see the getters at that very moment. Now when I click these add to cart buttons, actions will actually commit to mutations. So when I click one particular one here, update cart items action is called, or the mutation, sorry, is called. And when this happens, we can actually see this in real time. We can start seeing how each mutation is being committed. And the most interesting part is we can actually time travel to a particular mutation. And we can see the UI at that very moment. And in addition, we can actually see the state, the getters, that particular mutation at that point. So if there was any issues in our Vuex application, let's assume the state value initially was wrong, 
or um, your action wasn't committing successfully, or your mutation wasn't mutating the right you know, state property. A lot of that can actually be seen here. This has saved me so much time when it comes to debugging and understanding how Vuex store is integrated. Very quick, once again, I probably didn't give enough justice. The Vue team has done such a good job in the DevTools, but the idea is it integrates automatically. I provided some GIFs in case we needed it, but uh, I think we're good. So for that particular shopping cart application, initially, this was sort of the main folder structure. There was more to it, but this was the main meat. There was you know, the root app folder. There was the components where basically the card components were hosted, where the product components were hosted. And initially, there was a simple store index. The store index had a responsibility of basically declaring all the store properties, the state, the mutations, actions, and where basically the store was being created and exported. And in the main JS file, basically where the main instance is actually being used, we're able to import the store from this. Um, now, if you actually build your store this way, this is nothing wrong with this, this is standard, but you may tend to realize, you know what, things might be a little difficult to maintain. There might be a large number of mutations, a large number of actions. It would be nice if I can maintain this a little bit more. And Chris talked about this a little bit this morning. Vuex provides modules. Vuex modules can be used to break your application store into more manageable fragments. And the best part about a Vuex module is it actually can be created with the same pieces that make up a Vuex store. So for that particular shopping cart application, I was able to say, okay, since there's two distinct domains in my app, I can create a module for each particular domain, the cart domain and the product domain. And within each particular module, I can specify the state within that module, the mutations, the actions, the getters, etc. And when it comes to actually creating the Vuex store, all you have to do is basically pass it into a modules property, and the Vuex store does the rest. So instead of having a single store index um, where all your state exists, where all your mutations exist, etc., we can actually break this down a little further. We can say, okay, now we can have a module a little bit more you know, confined within the card index. We can have a module a little bit more confined within the product index. And the store index can just import these modules and create the store. We can also take this even a step further. If you start to realize, hey, you know, my actions is just ridiculous. I have so many actions in my store. I need to break it down you know, a lot more. You can start to think, okay, why don't you just separate it even further? Now, what I'm saying here, this isn't you know, revolutionary or a breakthrough. But this is a pattern I tend to follow. Um, and this is a good graphical representation of this. You know, let's assume the shopping cart application only had a cart and product domain. There was nothing else. You know, you can neatly map everything. And when it comes to testing, you can test each of these in an isolated manner. It makes things a lot easier. And let's assume that shopping cart application was, was something I was building for my boss. And my boss comes up to me and says, hey, Hassan, we need to introduce a brand new feature. It's a user profile. Um, it involves logging in, brand new components, et cetera, et cetera. Since I've already mapped it in such a neat manner, I can be like, okay, since there's going to be a lot of more data associated with the user profile, I'll give it a brand new module. And the beautiful part is my store is already prepared for this. All I have to do is declare my actions, getters, mutations for that module, and bring it back to my store. Now, a very good question sometimes that comes up is, um, where does shared level functionality live? Where does functionality that should live in the user, in the product, and in the cart be? You could replicate it. You, know, you could have your actions in multiple areas. You can have your mutations in multiple areas, but that's not necessarily nice. If you generally feel like, hey, I need a particular state information that should be available in multiple parts of my app, you can say, introduce a brand new module called shared module or something. There's nothing wrong with this. This makes sense. This is understandable. You can call it shared. You can call it utility. It's just basically the, the, the main aim of this is breaking down your app in such a way that it makes sense when somebody else looks at your store. It shouldn't be complicated. So this is where I'm trying to get into. It's basically making your entire application malleable. You want to be able to you know, conform, change your store as things go by. You also want to make your Vuex store maintainable. It has to be at a point in which you and everyone else in your team can maintain it. And that's the idea behind the Flux-like architecture. It, it basically introduces a brand new way, or not brand new anymore, but it's a, it's, a, it's a way of maintaining your application store state in such a way that things tend to grow well over time. And last but not least, it has to be manageable. It shouldn't make things more difficult. It shouldn't make things more complicated. If you feel like your Vuex store is making your app a lot more complicated than it is, then it probably is. It should be built in such a way it complements your app, it grows well with your app, and it makes things a breeze. So there's a few things I talked about today. I talked about a simple store. I talked about the Flux-like library Vuex. 
And I briefly touched upon an event bus. Now, a very common question would be, what is the right way and what is the wrong way? Personally, I believe there's no right or wrong. Um, Vue and the Vue ecosystem provides all these tools for us to use. It comes down to you and your team and the app you're building. An event bus is incredibly easy to set up and custom events as well. The issue with it is things get hard to track really quickly. A simple store builds upon this and makes things a little bit better, but your getters and your actions aren't really explicitly defined. Vuex is the most robust. That's a guarantee. Now, the only issue with Vuex some people tend to have is there's some additional boilerplate. Um, there's some issues setting up. You may not be familiar with Flux. But once you actually overcome that, you probably will stick with Vuex to manage any application you build with Vue. So that actually comes almost to the end of my presentation. I think it was a lot shorter than I was hoping for. Um, but hopefully that was useful. Um, there's one last thing I do want to talk about. Um, I talked about a lot of different things today. Um, it was very rough, very, very fast. Um, but a lot of the things I talked about today was part of a big project I've been working on. Um, and the project's actually about to come to completion, or the first part of it. Um, I had the privilege and the honor. Oh, fuck, sorry. <laughs> My bad. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't have said it. So, the one thing I want you guys to take away from this is state management is important. I've probably stressed that a lot in the presentation though, anyway. State management is really, is really important. Um, it's something you guys should understand and recognize in your application. Um, but I think that's understood anyway. So what was I saying? Yeah, there was a, uh, a really big project I was working on. I had the, uh, the opportunity to actually work on a book. Um, it's called Full Stack View. Um, the first part, the first release is actually scheduled for next week. Um, if anybody's interested, if any details you guys want to find, you can find it in fullstack.io slash view. Big disclaimer, the website is still under construction. There's still a lot of issues with it, but if there's any interest at all, feel free to reach out to me. Um, now that's out of the way. I just wanted to say that I hope you guys learned something from this. Um, I realized I could have made this presentation a little longer maybe, um, but my aim was to sort of explain things in such a way that everyone can understand. So if there's anything you guys didn't get, whether it's I spoke too fast or um, there's a topic I should have talked more about, I probably spoke too fast, but do let me know. Uh, it means a lot to me. Um, I'm online. Feel free to connect with me through any means you guys feel like. My DMs will always be open. Um, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Um, in terms of questions, I could do questions, yeah. Um, questions, I'm open to that as well. I'll do my best to answer anything else. Uh, not this one, probably. Which one? Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> I assumed that wasn't the one. Yes. No worries. No worries at all. I'll leave it here, I guess, till if there's any more questions. Uh, there's one question there. Two questions, actually, but I'll have that one. Are uh, you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even though we have multiple content, it's still the same story. Exactly. Story. Exactly. And that's what I was trying to convey in that diagram I've shown. Um, end of the day, you're building a single store. Nothing really changes when you actually run your view app. The benefit of using a module is you, be, you can break your store into more manageable fragments. You can break it as much as you feel like it, and that's the beauty behind it. I don't know if anyone's familiar with like, domain-driven design and whatnot, but when I build my application, I always try to build my client side in such a way that everything fits neatly to a particular domain, and I think modules do a fantastic part for that. Yeah. Um, is there anything anticipated for sharing um, That's a very good question, actually. So generally, the way you tend to, I think you're able to share information. <laughs> I'll repeat the question. Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> so he asked a very good question. <laughs> sorry. Um, the question he asked was, was there any considerations when it comes to actually um, passing information between view instances, or is it the same thing as components? Um, it's possible. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, the only issue is when you build your view application, for the most part, you assume you built it with a single view instance, and that's literally the root of your application. Um, after that, you basically declare your components um, separately. Um, and components are view instances. The only difference is view instances have some root-specific level things that you can't do in a component, like mounting a component to a particular DOM element or whatnot. That's a good question, though. Um, yes? There are a lot of people here that are new to view. Yes. Very, very good question, actually. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so I'll repeat the question. <laughs> so he was basically saying a lot of people here are brand new to view. Um, so what are the things I think people should know prior to getting the book? Um, so my aim when it comes to writing this book was to make it as simple as possible in getting started. Um, so the full stack view book follows a very example driven approach. So everything is, is explained through an example. So your very first application introduces view through a content delivery network, et cetera, et cetera. And when things get introduced like view or the view router, um, it's sort of explained very well. 
With that being said, though, there is some assumption that you know a little bit of JavaScript um, and maybe some, familiar, some familiarity with some understanding of how a framework works or a library works. Um, as long as you feel you're confident with that, the book is pretty much open to um, interpretation. And if any of you actually read the book, I think there's certain things that don't work, let me know. That means a lot for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, yes. Um, so there should actually... <laughs> That's a very good question. Oh, so the question was, is there a discount code to the book? Um, <laughs> so usually when the release happens, there is a pre-release sale. Um, and the idea behind it is if you sign up for the newsletter, you'd be familiar with the sale. Um, so usually, yes, in the first very release or prior to the release, there is a discount. I'm not sure how much just yet. Um, but, but do contact me. Let me know. Anybody here actually wants to, a discount on this, let me know. I'll try to make it work. I'm working with a few guys on this, so I'll try to pull a few strings. But, um, but yes, it's a good question nonetheless. Um, is there any other questions? Uh, any more hands I saw? Uh, no, I think, I think that's it. Thank you, guys. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, no. Yes. Yeah. It's a very good point, actually. Very, very good point. So, um, so funny enough, just following the standard way of setting up Vuex, I never had to think the concept of reduce. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. So the question was, um, where does reducers fit into Vuex? And is it something I had to think about um, when setting it up? Um, funny enough, I've actually never thought of reducers when I set up Vuex. And uh, another interesting thing is I've actually never used Redux properly. So Vuex was my first introduction to the Flux-like architecture. And Vuex does a fantastic job of making things a lot simpler than I think than other Flux-like libraries do. It's made for Vue. And basically, if you understand these main concepts, you can pretty much just keep things going. As long as you have the concept of actions, commits, and mutations, mutation, mutate, store, state, there's pretty much nothing else you have to worry about. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. Um, any more questions? No? Awesome. Thank you, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.